Happy wife, happy life, they say. <laughs> the wind is howling today. So good move, James, bringing her in. Happy me or happy snooks? <laughs> My real wife. I still don't know. <laughs> Snooks is never angry at me, unlike Jill. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, today's a bit of a maintenance day today with all this wind around. We're, um, we're just going to sit it out at Scorefell. But it's a nice anchorage. Um, we're just on a mooring there. First time for us on a mooring. Yeah, it all went really well, but yeah, it does get quite a few, like quite substantial bullets come down and off the top of the, uh, over that hill which can exaggerate the wind, but yeah, today was always going to be a bit of a blowy day. So a bit of a maintenance day for me. I'm going to hop up on the roof now and clean the solar panels, make sure they're all schmick after going that salt yesterday. And then um, engine room as well. Just give the engines a bit of love, a bit of once over, just check everything over and whatever after that big run yesterday. And um, probably just some editing, I think. We'll go for a bit of a beach comb either soon or, yeah, I don't know, whether either, I think, I think soon it'd be nice, Jilly. Yeah. Be a bit hotter than the salve, quite, quite cool once that sun goes. Yeah. Anyway, so we'll go for a bit of a beach comb and um, just to get off the boat and then a bit of a maintenance day, really. See how we go. Bit of a chill out day. Just had a nice hot brekkie, Jelly made us a nice hot brekkie. We had a lay in this morning, which was nice. And then, um, yeah, the loose plan is off to Thomas in the morning. And we'll be well and truly into the wet Sundays. All right. Talking about it's not going to do it. Let's go. Well, that was a bit of a mission getting up. Jilly had to give me a leg up. But yeah, it's just important to make sure the panels are nice. And this is probably excessive using spray and white, but it's not going to waste any more fresh. But just make sure they're all nice and clean and stuff. That way, then it gives you the best opportunity to fill. We're a bit, um, we're a bit blase with the power there last night, so she. Sucked it down a fair bit, but um, nice sunny day. Should give it a bit of a chance. Oh wee! There wasn't, there wasn't cyclonic up here. Anyway, I'll get this done so I can get down. It is a, uh, it's very picturesque. Like huge mountains in this one bay here, pretty much is. Well, that's it. It's the only bay. Yeah, we really like this anchorage. It's um, heaps of space, we're on a mooring. Uh, even with the gusty bullets, like the boat's really settled, which yeah. is nice. Yep. Just take some of the stress out of bad weather. Yep. But yeah, a new beach to comb. Always something different. Always something new to find. Yeah, I said to Jill, we'll just have a quick scout here because I don't really trust that tide, so I don't want to get caught inside. Even though we should be able to manage our way out, but yeah, we'll um, might be able to just come in later on. But yeah, today is just um, kick around, kick around lazy day today. I'm not really overly fussed on doing too much fishing and stuff. If you can, oh, you probably wouldn't be able to see, but well, we've still got plenty of fish. It's blowing a gale out there, and we've got a shit ton of fish on board. So for us, so yeah, just enjoy the warm weather. Get some toes in sand. I know that some guys have been telling me. You know, down um, south there, how cold it is and whatnot at the moment. But I mean, yeah, here we are still. Well, it's the middle of summer. Mm. Even the water temp's not cold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. Oh, well, you get a gusty bullet and it's all of a sudden a bit cool. That's all right if you want to do a bit of snuggling, eh? <laughs> There's these funny little shaped ones like this, see? Yeah, he's showing you, eh? Yeah. Well, he's a bit damaged, but it's a funny little. Hmm. Almost looks polished. Really round one. Man, maddest moment just now. I just come up the flybridge for the Savo. Just looking at that uh, beautiful sunset tonight. Like, look where we are. <laughs> yeah, couldn't get any more picturesque. And uh... yeah, just like kill me now, you know. Just said to Jill, got me house, my wife, my life, right here. Like, where else would you want to be, you know? Perfect.
back on the move. We've just departed Scorefell. Just departed Scorefell. Um, beautiful morning, as they said it was going to be. So it's actually quite nice to put a bit of uh, speed under bloody Snooksy. I just wanted to show you, like, so sort of sitting around 16 knots. Still using the same economy though as uh, as what we are when we're doing 12 knots really. So um, it's nice to be able to just, yeah, truck along on this part anyway and just give, just blow the cobwebs out. So we're just gonna head for Thomas today and um, oh, if we run over some ground, we'll drop something. But yeah, looking forward to hitting Thomas in this boat. Be a bit like when we went to Northwest, you know, just a nice little, one of our favorite spots up here and uh, and to be in our big boat, so cool. Yeah, it was a great couple of nights at Scorefell. Um, Anchorage is unreal, like, even though those bullets yesterday, but yeah, the boat, we didn't hear a sound. It was just quiet, just the slightest ripple. We had a pretty good spot too, though, so we were lucky there, but yeah. Hit the wet Sundays today. Even though it shouldn't be, uh, you know, like we're two weeks in, so you'd think we'd be a bit more versed on the on the filming and that now. But I do still lack a bit. And uh, I did. I said to Jill the other day when we went out to the reef and we found up a, a mark. We found the mark with the uh, where we got the nanny. And I didn't mention anything about the fact that we found it. It was a new spot. How I found it or anything. I think because as you come up to it. We don't know it's going to be a good spot, so we always approach it with, oh, we'll have a crack, see if there's anything yeah, here. Yeah, true, yeah. So, and I'm always too keen as well, you know, so. Yeah. I'll get better at that, but yeah, that mark the other day, we come up on, uh, we'll just, you know, search as I do, and um, found a few good ones in the green zone, of course, and then we were only just, yeah, a mile or so, two mile out of the green zone on the reef side and uh, run over a little spot. So it was pretty cool too for the guys that were following us in the other scimitar from New South Wales. They'd never caught a red nanny or anything like that before. So they just followed us and then yeah, they mirrored our drift. And um, yeah, one of them got his first ever red emperor, which was super cool. So that sort of stuff I love, you know. We've, we've caught plenty and I don't want to take that for granted, but it's always awesome to see someone catch their first. Yeah. Um, everyone does everything different. This is what I do. And I'm still getting a little bit used to the Garmin screen. I've only ever had Faruno and, and uh, Raymarine in, in Heath Ho, so um, these are very user friendly and easy to use. Now please, by all means, give me some feedback if I can improve this any. I'm still getting used to it. But I have found that, like this is just what I've been leaning towards, so you can see here, it's a bit easier to explain on these plotters as opposed to the Faruno setup. But you can see where we're in 44 metres of water. Um, but I'm only looking, that, that's 39 metres there, so that's where it starts. So I'm looking in metre increments. So it's probably down a fair bit there, um, but you can change it, you know? So, you know, that's, once we start getting into these, you know, there's two metre increments there. But the reason being is that, you know, like if we're looking for fish on the bottom, good nannies, things like that, emperor, I'm looking for marks, you know, like anything that's a bit of structure that's like the size of an esky, you know, like so you're looking for little small rocks and bumps on the bottom with something above it. So as we're cruising along here, I'll be looking for definitely a show of something hanging above the grip bottom. And then when we slow down and, and we'll turn around then, we'll mark that on the sounder, comes across over here. And then I'll come back then and we'll start doing some loops and try and find that rock. And if if it's just bait, yeah, it might be right, okay. Might be some traveling fish or something. But if there's a bit of structure with the fish above it, it's normally game on. So we'll see if we can't find something today, that'd be really good, but I'll definitely get better at showing you guys once we do. And then hopefully, of course, there's something on it. Well, this is us, Mac Bang in the Wit Sundays. Jilly's already getting well involved out there. So that's, uh, so we've got Thomas there straight ahead. That's Shaw in the background. And back here we got Goldsmith. But yeah, awesome day. Jesus. 
That's what I'm talking about right on. <laughs> the good part about having this, lads, is that I've got, the, she can't hear me. I've got the microphone in here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jilly, really embracing it. Woo, baby. We're just dragging a lure along the face of Thomas here, but um, big current lines back there, but we're just about to come around into the anchorage now. So that's sure ahead that you're looking at. Um, said to Jill just then, we might be able to have a bit of a look at this side, the eastern side, which normally, well, the last few trips we haven't been able to because it's been really rough. So might suss that out, but yeah, we're just about to come around the corner here now. And um, Yeah, one of our favourite little spots. Been pretty excited to get here, even though, I mean, it's, yeah. We just always had good experiences here, and it's a nice little anchorage, and um, it'd be really nice just to have the big boat here too, you know, so. So this little island here at the front, it's, um, I don't think it's got a name, it's just the part of the Thomas Island there, but it just, it, and it's got a little reef to the southern end there, I don't know if you can make it out on the screen, but pretty much comes about halfway across. So it forms a little natural anchorage here. So we got Naked Lady Beach straight ahead. And, um, and then, yeah, we've got these other two beaches here. So we'll just park up over here somewhere, I think, and that'll um, stay out of their way. Since we're back in Thomas here and we have done pretty good on the uh, on the trout and the squid over the years. We'll just have a little drag around here soon. I think before the tide goes out, maybe later, definitely later the south, but I like this little lure. It's a little Samiki uh, deep diver. But yeah, I like dragging it around in the shallows for trout. So we'll whack him on. I always, as you can probably guess too, from the from the vibes and things that I use, white's definitely a favorite there for the fish. And pink's a favorite for the squid. So yeah, I might just go out and have a little quick just a real quick flick around now and I'll drop Jill off at the beach so she can have a little look Bob Junkle let's get in beautiful little area look at this perfect look at over that bombing over there babe which one like um just straight out there oh yeah yeah, there's one on top. Yeah. Oh, I got one oh. straight up. <laughs> oh, I thought. Oh, look at the one coming in. I saw it. Yeah, that was the one I could see actually. The other one. He's having a little loser. Oh, no. oh, he's not too bad. Yeah, he's right. Oh, look at the other one right there, babe. Yeah, no. 
shit. Oh, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Oh. <laughs> so we're just along the shallows here, and we're actually joking bloody seeing all eagle eyes. Is that, there's two over there, I think. Popped it too. <laughs> Come on, get it. Nice, Jilly. Man, they're thick. He's gone. Oh, dang. Oh, oh yeah. It. Yeah, there's a big one over on the other side. Oh, they all ones there. Yeah. Are they fish? Yeah, no. Oh, no. Nah. A oh, little one. Babe, oh, a little one. Oi, oh, careful. I was trying to let him go. Oh, there's another one in behind it. Let's size that one. I just want to try and let him go. Yeah, you might really want to get off now. Oh, yeah, this one's a good one too. Just the other oh, side yeah. of that weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is my big one that got away. Oh! Oh! Oh, this is bastard. Oh, see oh, him come and get yeah. it. Oh, oh, oh. Well, he's only a little one. I'm not gonna keep you, bro. Ooh, go away. So we're just about to depart Thomas Island this morning and we're heading into Hamo. And this is uh, a spot that we always make sure we come and check out on any of our trips. We really love it here. It's a really lovely anchorage. It's only quite small, but um, there's no moorings, but it's just nice and calm. And it's a good southerly anchorage. So there's a couple of little beaches, I think three that we've checked out. Um, and they're no Whitehaven, like White Sand Beach, but um, surprisingly enough, there's no rubbish, which is really lovely. <laughs> Um, but heaps of um, opportunity for beach combing and shell collecting. Yeah, and I think because it's a bit quieter, it's, uh, it's a nice little spot. Uh, it is part of the Lindemann Group, so it's the southern end of the Whitsundays. Uh, and these islands probably haven't been hit for a cyclone for a few years now, so they're actually nice and green and heaps of vegetation. You can actually just smell the waddle in the air this morning. It's really lovely. So each beach is fringed with a little reef and the bay is normally just littered in bait. So heaps of opportunity for fish, heaps of squid. We actually were standing on the beach yesterday and you could see the squid just in the shallows. So of course we went and got the lures and had a bit of fun with them. So yeah, there is uh, lots to check out. You could spend a few days here for sure. Uh, we'll probably just make, sh make an effort to stop in on our way back if we end up coming back through. But yeah, I think as much as the Whitsunday is full of islands and I'm sure there's probably other bays that are similar and compare, um, it's rare to find such a nice spot that um, we can't fault. We haven't had a bad experience here. It is a lot less crowded too. So um, definitely something to keep in mind when you are traveling through in your own boat. Uh, you know, pretty much from here north now, you'll start fighting for anchorage and spots and and the bare boat charters and all that sort of stuff so and on top of that it's just quiet like i think once there's more boats you know there's there's more noise and not that it's a problem it's just nice when you're laying there in bed at night and all you can hear is the water and in the morning you just hear the birds and what did we have one two three four five boats here last night i mean there's there's heat for room for another yeah. another five and i think five is probably a bit of a max of what we've seen in here we wouldn't we would never see much more than that. It's not like West Bay at Percy's, so. No, and a couple of them only just coming out, asking they've already started to peel out, so. It might be the best kept secret until now. <laughs> All right, Julie, let's do this, eh? Yeah. One thing that can be a question mark around people's anchoring is how they secure their bridle to the chain. You can see here how the chain lays down there. So actually the bridle is holding the boat. So on a mono hole, you'd have like what's called a snubber, which is the same thing. But with a cat, you can go both sides. And what that'll do is 
also limit the yawing so limit how the boat turns like that on anchor even though the anchor's staying straight it'll it'll keep the boat a bit more straight in a cat but also then the rope takes that shock load off the off the uh, windlass and um, also stops the slapping too for you know just when you're at anchorage keeps it let the rope gives it acts as a bit of a natural shock absorber now a lot of setups are different this is what come with snooks and what the point of that is it, it would just you would just link that over the chain and it would hold it the trouble with these setups is is that if by chance some reason it comes slack during the night or you know the, the current pushes back that can just drop down and fall off and then you're back on the chain not the end of the world but um, you know can, can and could be a pain especially if you're trying to sleep or whatnot so I'll show you with it I'll show you the setup that we've got So this is what we've been using for a good while now. It's a, it's a soft shackle. Greg actually made this for us. And um, and this is all, this is the whole thing that's been, been hanging on to snooks now. The reason we took that and used it is because, um, yeah, Greg and Lisa have tested this on Noosa, a big sailing cat. And I mean, if these little shackles will hold a 16 meter sailing cat, in cyclone because they're up in the cyclone when it hit cans last year then i'm pretty sure it's going to hold little old snooks so yeah we were taking those bullets over at squawfield there and out the reef with all chop and bouncing and stuff like that and um so we've been using this since we've been using this since the day that um pretty much the whole time we've had snooks and that little bit of damage there happened the first time I used it. It must have got pinched in the chain, but that's all it is. Brilliant. What I've done is too, I've marked the road, the, the chain with some zip ties. So that'll give me a bit of an indication of uh, how many meters are out. So departed Thomas, uh, there's only a quick overnighter there for us, um, which is unfortunate because you know, I could spend a lot of the time there, but uh, as silly as it might sound, well, we've got, we've got enough stocks, but we're heading to Hamo to mainly two reasons. One's to refuel. Um, just interested, like the boat's sort of saying that we've still got like a third of a tank. Um, We've got a few different ways that we can check. It's got sensors in the tank, which isn't that reliable as a rule. And then also we've got the digital gauges, um, which yet to be seen. Like I remember with the outboards, with the Yemis done on Heave Ho, they were super accurate, like within a few liters. So uh, I don't know if these will be, given that uh, with the common rail, how they return so much fuel to the tank. It'll be interesting to see how accurate they are, but I'm just, it's just playing on my mind every day that goes on more so, you know, that, um, yeah, I just need to refuel. So keen to do that just so I can then see how accurate the gauges are after this big run. We've done a few, you know, like a few little runs to Keppel and that in the back earlier in the days to try and get a bit of a gist. And I think it's within reason, but after a big run where you're actually using them down, then I think I'll get a really accurate, um, you know, sort of summary or gauge of, of how they're going. So, I'm keen to do that for starters, so we'll do that. Uh, I know it is cheaper at Coral Sea, but the other reason is that um, it's Origin tonight, first Origin. So we could watch it on board just me and Jill, or we could go to the TAV with a hundred other partners. So um, yeah, that's always a good night, so uh, why not? We're only gonna spend one night in there. It's quite expensive compared to Heave Ho. Um, with Heave Ho, I think we we're $90 a night you don't want to know with snooks. So we're just going to have that one night there. Jill can have a eight hour long shower in the amenities. Um, get a few little you know, odds and ends stocks. I'll get some reading glasses. Thank God. <laughs> um, yeah, watch the origins tonight. We'll refuel in the morning. I'll give the boat a bit of a wash this today. And um, reset. yeah, just a reset and that hammer, you know, why not? So then we can just concentrate on just kicking around the wet Sundays. So we're just cruising past 
So this is the eastern side of shore. Shore's quite a substantial island. Quite narrow, but but long. So we don't, we've never been able to go up this side. Um, it's always been quite developed southerlies when we've been through in the Kevlar Cat. So one thing about going up the eastern side of shore is it's all green, this whole area. So loads and loads of green. So yeah, unfortunately no fishing. Pretty cool little area they like. So this is what they would call the neck or neck bay. It's the other side, but yeah, it's quite narrow. And so a little anchorage there, you would sometimes see some boats the other side there. So this is just the eastern side of that. Beautiful area, like check out the, look at the cliffs here and that. Crazy, all the pine trees. Awesome. See that hole there, babe? The hole in the rock. Wow. Oh, yeah. I need to fly my drone through that. With all that rock formations, you can see this gap in, in this uh, rock island over here. And then this little hole that we flew in front of just now. I really tried to get the drone through there, but uh, the remote control kept losing signal. So that's a shame. Thought it'd be good footage. Anyway, not to be. And I haven't got a backup drone, so if you lose this one, then no more drone footage until we get one. Anyway, let's get going, eh? There's Pentecost Island. No beach or anything on there, but just magnificent cliffs. Like, that's crazy. That's mainland combined with a bit of Long Island and then Hamo straight ahead. Over here is Solway Passage where we get around to uh, Whitehaven. How's the water? We should be heading that way, not this way. Makes it very pleasant though. Yeah. Hamilton Island Marina, Hamilton Island Marina. This is Make It Happen, Make It Happen, copy. Make It Happen, this is Hamilton Island Marina, go ahead. Yeah, g'day guys, yeah, we just got a berth book for the night. We're just um, pulled up at the front in the staging area. Copy that, Make It Happen. If you can please just remain outside the marina, just north of the entrance adjacent to the Yacht Club building. And then please set your vessel up on the starboard side for the right hand side of the boat. You will need a bow and stern line attached and your fender's right down touching the waterline and then just wait outside until I can have our concierge to assist you in. Over. Copy that. Make it happen, standby. Righto. So as you can tell, they deal with all sorts here. Like they got a lot of the bare boat charter operators as well. So very simplified messages. So Jill's going to be putting the fenders and the ropes on now on the starboard side. And uh, we'll wait till the concierge comes out and grabs us. So yeah, now we just stage. There's the entrance up the head there. And um, yeah, we just stage then this on the northern side while we set up our ropes and fenders and then the concierge will come out then and let us know where we're at. Follow them in. Hammer Marina is very uh, easy to get into. They look after you there. They're very clear with their um, instructions. And um, yeah, it's always really nice. Even if it's blowy, it's it's really not that hard to berth your boat. And um, yeah, they really make sure that you're sort of, uh, I guess they get to deal with the bare boat charter guys too. So they have to be clear and simplified messages and whatnot. So yeah, we really like Hamo. It is expensive, but uh, it's got that real holiday vibe to it. And it just gives you a chance to reset after, you know, three weeks and uh, give the boat a tidy up. Why not, you know?
The IGA there is very well stocked, like any other IGA you'd get anywhere, really. Don't mind the Cocoa Pops. We're on holidays. Don't be judging. Plus, we're still getting used to this whole um, being on the boat and re getting to restock and, um, you know, walking down the pontoons and whatnot, you know, and it's just, a, it's just a nice feeling when you got your own rig there and you've, you know, spent the day tidying it up, you're restocking it, you're cruising around, you're mingling with other people of different walks of life and um, all while in paradise, you know, so, yeah, why not? Alright, eh? work done for the day. Boat's clean, we're clean, ready to go. Now it's time to play. Yeah, give the boat a good once over. Looks a million dollars. Fill the water, did the groceries. Beers. Just fuel up in the morning. Now we're gonna go and fuel up tonight at the tab. <laughs> Let's go and do it. Let's go. Wow, look how, how good she look, boys. Ah, damn. <laughs> Wit Sundays during winter, man. What a place. Nice and warm temperatures beautiful water. In the next episode, we kick around Whitehaven. We do some hikes. Yay! And we man up and take the boat in Hill Inlet, which is just an unbelievable, picturesque place. Thanks for following along. We appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, tune in next week.